Hello, Les from Thailand here. Today's video is going to be about taking your Thai girlfriend or your Thai wife back to your home country. What are the dangers of doing this? And I've got a couple of stories for you. Again, all the stories I tell are truthful because I, because I know the people who have been involved in the stories I'm telling. So get yourself a cup of coffee, sit down and listen to those two stories that I've got to tell. So stories, everybody likes stories and again everybody likes the stories from Thailand because there are so many. So this one is about a friend of mine who was married to a Thai girl and he took his wife back to England. Now they lived in Pattaya and they lived in Pattaya for a couple of years and he, he decided to marry this girl a year after he met her and she was a very attractive, she wasn't a young young girl, she was 35 years old but very petite and very very pretty girl so he married her and then took her back to the uk for a six month holiday with the intentions of her moving over there full time um, now they lived in patia and he was on a, a modest in income he wasn't a wealthy man at all he was the the average guy that really comes here to thailand find wanting to find somebody to to be with for the rest of their lives so he wasn't wealthy, he didn't have a lot of money every month, um, he liked his beer, he liked the social side of living in Pattaya. So when he went back to England, he was going to go back to his old ways where he used to go to the working men's club two or three times a week, had a bit of a gamble on the horses and she was going to be left at home most of the time. So now I can hear the bells ringing already by the people watching this video. So anyway, he went back to his home country, the UK, and his brother used to rent properties out. So he, he asked his brother whether he had a property that he could rent in the area which he lived. And of course, his brother had a, a property. Now it was a, a two bedroom terraced street house. Now this is what a, a two bedroom sort of terraced street house is. It's not luxury, it's sort of the poor standard of living. This two bedroom terrace house wasn't the best house or best location, but he said for the six months that they were going to be living there, that'll do. But in reality, he was never going to move away from that and he was never going to move upwards. He was always going to stay in there because it, one, it was from his brother. So he got it at, at a sort of reduced rent. Now, he lived in a condo in Patty. Now, the condo that he lived in was a two bedroom condo, which was quite nice. And he was paying the equivalent of £400 a month to live in this two bedroom condo which was very very nice very very modern now this two bedroom terrace street house that he was living in he was paying £500 a month to live in that plus the council tax of £100 so his, his rental cost for living in an inferior property straight away was more than he was paying to live in Pattaya and as all Thai people think all Thai ladies out of with Phalangs think that we're millionaires and we live a, in a nice house, in a nice area. And I've got to say that she was very shocked when she got back to the UK and this was going to be the new standard of living where she was going to be living. Again, moving away from many, many friends in Thailand to somewhere where she didn't know anybody whatsoever in a strange country. And where he lived, Thai food wasn't readily available, so she was going to struggle to get the ingredients that Thai people want to eat, the food that they like. They, she wasn't into Western food whatsoever, so as you can see, the bells are starting to ring with regard to her not being happy over there in the first place. So they moved back to the UK in the summer months because he knew she was going to feel the cold in the winter and she, he sort of wanted her to get acclimatised to the English weather before winter set in. So June, July, August and September are sort of our best months of the year with regard to weather. But when he got back to the UK and then he started having his two or three days a week out down at the club and coming back drunk and she's been sat at home watching English TV, no Thai TV whatsoever. She was starting to feel lonely and depressed and not very happy. So he asked her whether she wanted to join the English language school and there in that school there was maybe half a dozen different Thai people that at least she could have some Thai conversation with and also learn better English. So she agreed to do that and sort of this opened up another can of worms because when he was taking care of her back in England he explained to her it's more expensive to live here in England so he wasn't going to give her the salary that he used to give her in Thailand. 
So he, he sort of reduced her salary by half. She had no friends over here. She had no Thai TV. Trying to find the ingredients so she could cook her own Thai food. He was disappearing two or three times a, a week to the club. The bell started ringing for sure. So when she joined this English class with these other Thai girls, talking about their lifestyle over here, they were living in the detached houses. One of them, her boyfriend, gave her a BMW to go to college with, and the other one had a, a motorbike and scooter that he bought so she could tra travel around. And this girl that was with my friend had none of this. So you can see even more depressed of what was happening. Now my friend had a dog, it was a little black Labrador that his brother used to look after whilst he was over in, in Thailand. So when he moved back to England, he looked after the dog. So when he moved back to England, the dog moved back in with him. Now the Thai and dogs have a very funny relationship. They don't treat dogs like pets like we do in England. So the dog used to sleep on the bed. She didn't like the dog sleeping on the bed. The dog should be outside. So there was an argument with the dog. Anyway, she tried to get... <laughs> anyway, one day the dog was on the bed. So she pushed the dog off in a rather robust way. And the dog growled at her and, and snarled at her. So she shouted, I'm going to kill the dog. I'm going to kill the dog. Next time it barks at me or growls at me, I'm going to kill the dog. So then that just caused a little bit more anger and frustration. So this girl wasn't happy at all. And this was only into six weeks of actually the six month stay that she was going to have in England. Anyway, one day my friend came home drunk from the club and she asked him for some money to go and buy some clothes. And he says, no. And she says, every time you go drinking in the club, you spend 20 or 30 pounds every day when you go, three times a week. She says, I want 100 pounds to go and buy some clothes, which will last me for years. So she says, you waste your money. I want to buy some clothes for me that will last a long time. And he says, no. And on this particular day that it came back from the club, and again, it was still summer months. She had the central heating on in July and she had a, a duvet while she was sat on the sofa watching the English TV that she hated. So she was very, very angry. Anyway, that day resulted in a massive argument where they started shouting and screaming at each other and she came at him with a knife and she stopped short of actually stabbing him with this knife. So she ran out of the door and ran next door to the next door neighbour that had befriended her and sort of was a, was a friend to her. My friend called the police it was only 250 yards down the street, police station, the local police station, and three policemen arrived at his property. And these three policemen asked what had gone on. And uh, one of the policemen said, I'll go next door and we'll take her to the police station. And my friend says, it'll take more than one of you to take her to the police station because she's so wound up. So the policeman asked, how big was she? And he said, oh, she's only small. He says, nah. He said, he'll manage, don't worry. So they got the information off of my friend with regard to she had threatened him with a knife. Anyway, the policeman radioed for these other two policemen to come and give him a hand to arrest this Thai girl and put her in the van and transport her the 250 yards to the local police station. I'm not kidding you, it took three policemen to restrain this fiery Thai girl to put her in the police van and take her to the local police station. And my friend just laughed at the policeman and says, I told you, I told you she was a fiery girl. So anyway, long story short, he didn't press charges and the police agreed because he didn't want to press any charges. They weren't going to press any charges, even though she was in possession of a knife. Because everybody agreed that she was going to go back to Thailand. She no longer wanted to stay in the UK and she hadn't been in the UK for more than two months when she decided to leave. So this was a disastrous relationship, taking his wife back to England, thinking she was going to be happy in England, living in worse conditions that she was living in than she lived in the nice, beautiful condo in Pattaya. Her perception of living the Farang life in England was everything was going to be brilliant and she's going to have a really happy life over in England turned very, very sour. 
So she went back to Thailand and within two or three months had divorced and the marriage was over. And my friend returned back to Thailand looking for another girlfriend. And now I've got to say the girlfriend that he's with now, he's been with her now for maybe nine years. And they're happy together. She's living back in England again with him. Different girl, different lifestyle, different wants, different needs. Whether they're happy or not, I don't know because I'm not seeing them for about five or six years now. But that was a story about one relationship going badly wrong in England. So okay, the second story I'm going to tell you involves this, this girl who was trying to get either to Holland or trying to get to England. She had two boyfriends and basically she just wanted to leave Thailand and she wanted to go and live abroad and she had two boyfriends at the same time. One was an English guy and one was a guy from Holland, a Dutch guy. So the English guy wanted to take her back to England for a holiday and he said, yeah, he'll pay for everything. So he said to this girl, that if everything works out okay, he's going to marry her. And they were going to go tell the immigration that they were going to get married in England. So my friend went to the immigration department trying to get a visa for her to come and visit the UK. And they were both interviewed in a separate office. And about 30 minutes later, the interviewing officer came and had a word with my friend and said, how well do you know this girl? that you're going to take back to England. He said, oh, he said, I've known for a long time. He said, how long's a long time? He said, oh, three years. Oh, so he said, did you know that she tried to, to go to another country with another foreigner only six months ago? And did you know that this foreign guy deposited 10,000 euros into her account so it looks as if she had sufficient funds in Thailand of 10,000 euros? And my friend said, no, no idea, no idea. So he said, consequently, he said her visa to, to come and see you in England has been declined. So as you can imagine, when the both got back together again, my friend was very disappointed, the fact that she lied to him with regard to she wanted to either go to Holland or she wanted to go to England. Whoever got there first managed to take her to their country. So they sort of split up for a, a week or two, but he really liked her. And they had a good chat one day. And she said, I just want to leave Thailand. I want to leave Thailand. I think my future is in another country and it's not this. She said, I'm very, very sorry. But she said, I like you and I like my other friend that lives in Holland. So she said, I just wanted to leave Thailand. So anyway, my friend split up with her and decided that leave her, get on with the rest of her life to the guy from Holland. So anyway, a year or so later, she was successful and going back to Holland with this Dutch guy. And... She was living in Holland and he was a businessman, so he was always working away. So she still had my friend's telephone number, who used to go to Thailand and live in England, back to Thailand, live in England. And she called him one day and she said, my husband is going away for three weeks. So she said, if you want to meet me in Holland, come across to Holland and meet me when you come back to England. So my friend, OK, he likes her. So he thought he'd just go and see her. So he went to Holland to see this Thai girl that was married to a Dutchman who was away on business for three weeks and she was home alone for three weeks. So they had a, a wonderful time for a week and a half and she paid for everything as well for my friend while she were there in, in Holland. And uh, he thought, wow, you know, this guy who's paying for this girl to stay with him is treating her ex-boyfriend and this Dutch guy was never going to know about it. But things like this happen all the time so this is the danger of taking your partner Thai wife back to your home country they are going to get the attention because they're beautiful and they're different to the Western girls so just two stories with regard to the dangers of taking your Thai partner or Thai girlfriend back to your home country so from Les living the dream in Thailand till the next video bye for now